So the first one is super classic. Okay. I just got my heart broken. What do I do? <laughs> um, you got to be able to love yourself. I think uh, um, I'm actually one of the victims uh, from heartbroken. You know, I I'm a single parent. I'm a single father, so I totally understand what you're going through. But I think you'll be able to go through anything once you know how to empathize with yourself. You know, you'll be able to. Uh, set out boundaries of what matters to you. You know, it's it's definitely about connecting to other people. It's about socializing. It's about you know exercising and all those things. But none of that matter if you are not able to really uh, know what you are all about, and, and you will be able to understand that you'll be able to be happy by yourself also. And and I think that will be you know the key. To um, any relationships to begin with, and and that's when you have a, a healthy relationship in your in your next uh, relationship. I hate house chores. I'm too busy for them anyway. Do you mm-hmm. like doing them? And what's your favorite chore to do around the house? Um, I do it with my children. Yeah. So I don't blame you at all. Like when <laughs> I was just me alone, then I felt like you know if I do it, I do it. If I don't do it, if I don't do it. Um, but then I, I became a fan of the minimalist. You know, minimal living and like having less clutter and things like that. And then I started to do more chores a little bit. Uh, but because now, now that I have a seven-year-old and you want to be able to anchor responsibility, you know, you got to be able to walk the talk and show my daughter um, of how to be responsible for your room and things like that. So we started cooking together, cleaning together, uh, cleaning dishes together is very therapeutic. Um, oh yeah, we it could be. we clean up books together. Uh, We do journaling together, um, oh. so so those are the things that you could connect with a child, you know, mm-hmm. because uh, fatherhood is a lifetime responsibility full of challenges, warmness, mm-hmm. and sleepless nights. You got to be able to connect before you correct, um, and these are and doing chores is the way for me to connect with my child. Mm-hmm. So it's part of parenthood. How can I be good at English when I have no money to go to any English-speaking country and learn in okay. real life? I would put myself in your shoes and think about how I, because English is natural to me. I mean, I moved to middle of nowhere in New Zealand when I was in grade seven or something like that, and I spent majority of my time in a school with no, um, not not many ties. So it became easier and easier and more internalized rather than memorizing vocabularies or grammar. It's a bit harder. But if I were to sympathize with the question and think about my Japanese, my Nihongo journey of about three months um, of like trying to pick the language, it didn't work out. Even if I had the money and pay for it. And like to to spend time in the classroom and try to memorize things, but I would listen to Spotify and listen to YouTube. Uh, these two um, are they're not going to like me very much, and I hope that they're not your sponsors. <laughs> but but they provide f- free education, you know. So I have my uh, podcast in my phone and the channels that teach you uh, Japanese. Vocabularies or, or languages, and, and now I, I know I know the difference between hontone and, and majide, and when to speak and when not to speak it uh, for free. It's still going to be tough, and maybe because I'm 40 years old and my brain is not good as yours anymore. But I think you know, just trying to look at alternative sources from classroom that is free um, and funny. You know, like Kamnidi, for example, I I get no compensation from it, but <laughs> but I think you'll be able to pick it up quicker and with less stress. And once you really enjoy it, um, I think you'll be able to to pick it up more or less. Good luck with the um, language proficiency journey. 